Hello. Mute yourself. I'm not muting myself. I'm listening to them. You can listen there. Can you uh, mute yourself? The meeting has not started yet. Yeah. See. Okay. I'm going. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, yeah, we'll get started in a bit. We're just waiting for everyone to come.
Hello everyone, we'll get started soon, so thank you for your patience. Like, you're supposed to keep it on top. Uh, hi everyone, welcome uh, to day one of the Hackathon um, 2020. Um, this is uh, the Hackathon organizer team, um, a brief introduction about us. Um, so um, uh, Dia, Ethan and uh, Shreya are interns who work for the uh, Rishi Kumar uh, uh, for Congress 2020. And uh, they have, um, uh, they and a, and a couple other folks have organize this hackathon so that uh, middle school and high school students can participate and um, uh, and benefit by looking at the current issues and uh, brainstorm solutions. Um, so we'll get started with the slide deck. Um, go ahead. Um, go ahead, Dia. Sounds good. As Ms. Pierce said, thank you all for coming here today. We really appreciate your time. And I know that you all will learn a lot from this experience. I know it's online, so the format's a little different than what we would have for a normal hackathon. So just bear with us for this. Uh, it's all a new experience for us. But you'll have the chance to be really creative with your solutions and we'll explain more about um, what each division is so you get a better idea of what you'll be doing this weekend. Next slide, please. So right now we wanna do team signups. If you already have team members that you wanna sign up with, please go to this link here. If you don't have a team, please fill out this form. So I'll put both of these in the chat right now so that you both have access. So you have access to both of them. Any questions? Uh, uh, feel yeah, free to ask questions. Question. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So are, are one person teams allowed? We want to yes. have three to five, but uh, if you'd prefer working by yourself, that's also okay. Okay, great, thank you. 
Any other questions? But please do not have more than five members in your team. So you can fill out these forms while we're discussing, but please make sure to get this done. Okay, so the goal of our hackathon today is to engage students in solving problems related to COVID-19 as it's an issue that's really plaguing our society. In order to do so, each team will have access to four databases and their solutions must incorporate data from at least one. And we'll go over this more detail later. Um, Ethan will go over this, but the, we'll, you'll get four different databases from different topics related to how COVID has affected our society and your solution, whether you be in the policy division or the coding division, your solution must incorporate one. But our whole goal is just to inspire creativity and really get you thinking about what you can do to make a difference in your society. Next slide. Um, Shreya, do you want to go for this? Yes. Um, so this is what the agenda for the first day looks like. So from now until 9.15, we're just going to have our introduction. And then at uh, 9.15 until 9.30, um, Rishi Kumar is going to give the keynote address. And then from 9.30 until 12.45, you guys will have group work. So that's a chance for you to work with your teams on on the policy or the coding. From 12.45 until 2.25, we're gonna have a lunch break. And then um, from 2.30 to se until 7 p.m., we have group work. So if you finish earlier, you don't have to stay for the entire time, but just know that you have until 7 p.m. to uh, work on your policy or coding solution. Uh, is the agenda clear to everyone? Okay, there are no questions. We'll move on. Uh, Ethan, go for it. Um, so the two main divisions or two divisions at all are coding and policy. You know, coding, you'll develop a piece of software using data sets. We provide other sources to develop a piece of software that helps government at any issue. And while a fully functioning prototype isn't required, it's strongly recommended. And uh, you will you should be able to present on it and give your solution in detail. You know, the policy is similar. You're going to create a congressional policy for state or federal government handling one specific issue and present on that later. Any questions? Any uh, concerns? If you have any questions, you can type them in the chat box and we can answer them. Okay, next slide, please. Ethan? Uh, so the four databases we're providing are uh, the unemployment database, job turnover, consumer spending, and uh, American uh, time usage. They're all from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the names are somewhat self-explanatory. Um, you know, if you want access to these databases that are in a GitHub project on the link, the link will be posted in the chat in a second here so you guys can get access to it. Any questions? If you have any questions, again, just put them in the chat. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, so just keep in mind that you will be giving a pitch on day two. This is not something that you need to work on today, but just keep it in mind as you're working. So these pitches will be given tomorrow. You'll have a limit of three slides that you can use and a maximum of five minutes to present. And obviously you can go below this, there's no minimum. And you can look at the judging criteria on the right. We'll be looking at, does this project address a civic need? So this is whether it's related to the topic, keep in mind um, that it has to be about COVID and how you can improve society in some way. Is it accessible? How many people are benefited? You want your solution to help as many people as possible, but keep in mind that you don't wanna make it too broad so that you won't be able to help anyone really in depth. Just make sure there's a balance. Next is ex execution. Is this product doable? Think about the time constraints and the cost and make sure that you address that somehow in your pitch. 
and originality is it original obviously we want you guys to be creative as possible so just be creative um, think of great solutions and i know you guys can do great and you will be ranked on a scale of one to five one being the lowest five being the best next slide ethan So for submissions, you know, project, most of your project files should go on a GitHub repository you create. And then the slideshow you're going to present to the judges should be on Google Slides. And then uh, there is a form submission link there that I'll paste in the chat here. We'll, we simply want the shareable links to your project and the slideshow at midnight tonight so that we can have access to it and make sure we have everything lined up with the right teams. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, go for it. Uh, so, okay, it's just about like the, the submission. So are we creating our own GitHub repository or are we just uh, in putting, uh, putting our code in the repository that you guys sent us? Um, you would be probably, uh, putting... Sorry, what? Um, it'd probably be easier just to create your own so that there's no confusion with other people's projects. So just uh, create your own repository and uh, share the link with us. Okay, and then, okay, I also had another question. So we had yeah, so about our idea. We had an idea that's like related to like solving some like education issues, but those aren't like of some of the data sets that were like that are that you guys were given that gave us. Uh, is like, is it okay as long as we're using like some sort of data? Like, if we like do some research or like, like reach out to people, is like that good enough? Yeah. Um, uh, so long as, as your long data set is verified uh, and is. Uh, um, and is uh, open to public, uh, I think it should be okay. Okay, let's just make this a general rule to everyone. So I know there are a lot of questions in the chat about data sets. So if you want to use a data set that's not part of the ones that we have given you, please make sure in your pitch that you provide the link to the data set you use so that we have access to look at it and verify it. Does that sound good to everyone? Okay. Can we move on? Yeah. Okay. I think you skipped a slide. Yeah, okay, cool. this slide right here. So each team we decided will consist of three to five members. I know there was a question in the beginning if someone could work by themselves. If you really do wanna work by yourself, that's okay, but please do not exceed the five member limit. So how this is gonna work for the day is when we're splitting up into teams, the coding teams will remain in this Zoom room. So if you're interested in creating a coding solution, please stay here. When we tell you to do so, the policy teams will move to a separate Zoom room just so that we can organize everything um, and make it so that all the policy teams are in one area. So I will send out the Zoom link in the chat, but don't go yet. We still have the keynote speech. So after that, we'll allow you guys to break up into the separate groups. So just keep in mind, think about what group you wanna be in. And then um, after the keynote, we can split out. All right. We will be uh, creating a um, FAQ document, um, uh, which will be put out after this slide deck. Uh, so uh, be sure to refer to that if you have any questions. In the meantime, we'll try to answer as many questions as you have in chat. So keep um, in mind, sorry, just really quick, just keep in mind, we'll have mentors circling around the rooms and we'll always be here. If you have any questions that pop up later in the day, we'll be there to answer them. All right. Uh, do we want to, um, so now we'll um, uh, let uh, uh, Rishi um, uh, give us a keynote um, explaining about his uh, candidacy for um, the Congressional District 18. I have a question. Yes. Uh, uh, can you hold on to the we... question? Can you hold on to the questions? Because we are, um, we are a bit uh, behind time. Uh, we want to make sure we get to um, get back on schedule. Sure. If you want, you can put it in the chat and we'll be happy to answer during the keynote. Let me, um, Rishi, are you there? 
Yes. Okay. It's all yours. All right. How's everyone doing today? Hi, Rishi. We can't see you. Still waking up, everybody? You know it. Everybody needs some caffeine. Everybody's very quiet. Come on. Let's get this going. Is everyone excited about the hackathon? Uh, Rishi, yeah, we, can't, uh, we can't. We can't see, can't see you, your Rishi. screen. Yeah, but you can hear me, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't hear anything back. What's going on? Okay, right. there we go. It's good now. Okay. So is everyone awake or sleeping? What's going on? I think awake. most of us are awake. awake. Okay, We're good. Awake. I don't hear anything back. Come on, I need to hear some energy. Or should we get How some caffeine? We? All right. Fi finally, I see Arushi is awake. Good. We're awake, right. sir. Okay, good. Jacob. Okay, I hear a couple of voices who are awake. All right. So this is uh, our very first hackathon. And uh, we have an exciting day lined up for you based upon what you heard. So firstly, I thank our management team uh, that have been uh, running our technology component of our internship, uh, summer internship. And uh, my congratulations to Priya Shastri for making this happen. Uh, she's our director of technology. And then we have two managers. We have Ethan Breckenridge and also uh, Shreya Chaudhary and uh, a lot of other folks uh, on this team that have come together to make this happen. And this is the very first one and we'll have many more. So I'll run through a quick uh, backdrop to what's going on with our internship program and see if you have any questions. So let's get this going. Hi, Rishi. I don't think you're sharing audio. All right. So can you see the screen? All right. So, so that's, uh, I somehow was expecting an intro, but that didn't happen. It's okay. So this is uh, who I am, a uh, high-tech executive of Silicon Valley, work for companies like IBM and Cisco, and uh, California Democratic Party delegate, executive board member, and second term on the city council and currently running for United States Congress. So we have some very simple people-centric values, we call it, there for the people. And, uh, and we apply the high-tech framework of innovation to everything we do in the public sector. And that's the reason why we are gathered here at the hackathon also, to sort of get a sense of, uh, of uh, how we can apply your intellect into some of our policies but also to see what kind of innovative uh, projects you work on that would inspire and, and uh, move us in a very specific way to address the tough challenges of our district. And today we are talking about obviously COVID-19, which is probably the most significant challenge on hand that we have. And uh, so there are big challenges with uh, housing, transportation, with COVID-19, even with uh, racism inequality. So those are things that we need to address. And uh, you know, the, the handicap that we have is elected leaders who seemingly are out of touch with reality. And specifically when it comes to Silicon Valley high tech. People can opt out of. Well, Facebook offered to all of its users a blanket opt-in to share their privacy data with any third party users. Congresswoman, yes, that's how our platform works. You have to opt in to sign into any app before you use it. It's it would be a very Are you willing to change your business model in the interest of protecting individual privacy? Congresswoman, we are, have made and are continuing to make changes to reduce the amount of no, data. Are you willing to change your business model in the interest of protecting individual privacy? 
<laughs> Congresswoman, I'm not sure what that means. So, you know, Mark was uh, quite poker faced with his response, but he was probably cringing quite a bit because uh, one of our congressional elected leaders calls uh, Congress as technologically illiterate. I'm not making that up. You can go look that up. And that's the sad state of this country. I mean, uh, Silicon Valley has never had a high tech, uh, uh, high tech leader. I mean, somebody who gets the innovation economy, somebody who gets, you know, how do we need to sustain the startup culture that we have here? You know, it has happened because we have folks who are, who are bright, the best and brightest of minds. You know, many of your parents probably immigrated to, to the United States. Uh, they came in as uh, students, you know, went about with the master's, PhD, and, and then they became part of Silicon Valley. And this is really what brings us together here. But I don't think so our elected leaders have really done anything to address that. So I would never have thought of myself uh, as, as somebody who would uh, be in the world of politics. And I still sometimes I'm very surprised that here I am. But uh, we have had a pretty good record so far. You know, most votes in uh, Saratoga's election history. And, uh, you know, we really don't have a base in Saratoga. So when I first ran, people looked at me as like, who's this guy running? You know, what is he going to do for our community? I mean, you don't look like a, a, a politician. But uh, when they saw the impact, the ability to solve some of the big challenges, you know, applying the high-tech framework of innovation to every problem, to see how we can, it's not just activity for the sake of activity, but we are actually addressing some of the top challenges and moving the ball further every single day. And that's exactly what our internship team is doing. You know, there is a lot of energy and some amazing ideas that are coming out of this every single day. And uh, you can see all the pings that are happening in the backdrop. It's still early because I know many of the younger high school and college students, they wake up early, they wake up late, not this early, but there's still so much Slack activity happening right now because we use that as a collaboration tool. Look at that, because there is so much, so much chatter. There is like excitement. People want to do stuff. Our young fellows want to do stuff. And I'm completely feeding off that energy. And there are some amazing ideas that are happening. So, you know, when you look at uh, this run, uh, running for Congress, uh, we have already defined history. Uh, we were the first Democratic Party challenger to make it past the primary. And we are also the very first uh, to raise, uh, we have outraised pretty much every other, every other challenger in the last 28 years in terms of uh, raising funds for campaigns. So we are doing well. And here is what's happening. So my political run started in 2013 and we are eight and no, we have won eight elections in a row and this will be the ninth one on November 3rd, 2020. And so this is where we are with the coronavirus. So we are helping neighbors. We actually stopped our campaign. You know, that's, that's what good politicians would do. You know, your, your purpose is to help people. And sometimes our elected leaders forget that. We have so many career politicians in the United States who have no clue of what the real world is about. You know, we stopped our campaign and we engaged with the people. And today we would have called every senior of Silicon Valley today. Today's the day. Today's a big day for us. We have been doing this for many weeks now. And it, took, it has taken us a few hundred volunteers to get through. But we are calling every single senior. And my pledge is that when we get elected, you know, when there is a crisis, you know, I will be out there calling every family, every resident of Silicon Valley, how can I help? What can I do? When we call seniors, we're not asking for support for this run. We're saying, do you need medication? Do you need groceries? Yesterday evening, I was there at a senior's home to drop something off. You know, I took the time to be, drive up to Cambrian Park and, uh, and then drop off you know, what the senior had requested. We are all giving each other, our neighbors who need help, personal attention, because that's how we can build a community together. So yes, we stopped a campaign and we have been helping our neighbors. And look at this, you know, we have hundreds of our volunteers have helped out thousands of our neighbors. It's a phenomenal story playing out. I don't, I don't think so. This something like this has ever happened in Silicon Valley. 
We have had over 25 town hall meetings. We had four town hall meetings just to talk about racism and inequality. We had a council member, the, the first transgender to be elected to the Minneapolis City Council who was on a podcast with us, 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, all the way from Minneapolis talking about racism, the epicenter of this uprising that is happening. You know, we had him talking about stuff. We have a podcast, Reality Check for Rishi, where we talk to tech executives. We have talked to uh, Amit Walia, who is the, uh, who is the CEO of uh, Informatica. In fact, Amit's son is part of our internship now this summer. We are, we are quite amazed at the level of talent that is joining us. We had uh, Naveen Chadda. He's a very well-known figure here, uh, part of Mayfield uh, Funds. And uh, he runs like a few billion dollars worth of funds. And, uh, and he was uh, on a podcast on a Thursday evening. So this is the commitment we have to have these types of conversations and to see how we can come together to solve these problems. And when you look at uh, the empowering the youth, you know what, what we did, I was appointed to the California Computer Science Strategic Implementation Panel by the California Senate Rules Committee. And what we have done is we have defined a K-12 computer science curriculum for all of California. So in 2022, our kindergarten students will start learning computer science, the fundamental logic you know, of what it takes for them to be coders or perhaps not coders in how to be a project manager down the road, how to be a, how to be a social media expert, because all this pertains to our high-tech innovation economy. And so that curriculum will be rolled out, geared to teaching computer science, but also some of the peripheral offerings that need to be understood for somebody to succeed in the world of computer science. That is pretty amazing that we have done here in the state of California. And I had multiple meetings in Sacramento, working with teachers, with educators to see how we can carve out a curriculum. And the reason why they appointed me into that, because STEM has been near and dear to me. We have been running the Lego Robotics Bootcamp for many, many years. When we first started, we only had a single robotics, uh, Lego Robotics team. And now when we do the team formation day, we get over 25, 30 teams that come together, hundreds of students. And then we run a boot camp for them to teach them the mechanics of, of robotics. You know, how do you design robot? How do you program robots? That has all been taught for many years now. We also launched the entrepreneurship boot camp for young kids, for the middle school and high school students. We taught this in 12 cities of California and also Charlotte, North Carolina. Over 2,000 students got trained. Working with Mayor Sam Licardo, you know, we said, Sam, show us the most disadvantaged areas of San Jose, and we would love to run it there. So the Sam, Sam's team would actually pick out different areas, and we would actually run this coding program, this entrepreneurship program in those areas. Because we need to bring people together. The innovation economy just slides by. You know, you are all very, very lucky. You're all very, very lucky because you have your parents, you have uncles and aunts who can be role models for you. But there are thousands of Silicon Valley kids who just don't understand, you know, what is innovation? What is high tech? They kind of see it all blow by. And then they have to figure out, you know, how they will find a place in this economy. And they struggle. They struggle because there are opportunities not there for them. And that's, that's the reason why we are doing all this. You know, this hackathon is not just meant for you, but we would like to invite every student of Silicon Valley to join this. You know, our turnout is not very good today, and I'm a little dismayed with that. We could have done a lot better, but this is a great start. And I still am very much appreciative of all the effort that has gone behind the scenes to make it happen to today. Today, it's, it's a phenomenal day, and it's going to grow every single year. You know, this, this tradition of the hackathon will never, ever stop. But as you participate in the hackathon today, I invite you to think about all the bigger problems we need to solve. There are transportation challenges. You know, we wrote a paper, 21 minutes in 21 counties. You now we talk about building out a zero greenhouse gas, high-speed transportation system, connecting every city of uh, the Bay Area, not just the Bay Area. The Bay Area is 10, 10 counties. We have a region called the Northern California Mega Region, and that has 21 counties. And as far away as Yuba City to the Monterey Peninsula, 
And we can connect all these different counties with high-speed transportation where you can get from anywhere to anywhere in less than 21 minutes. Has any, on a, any of our elected leaders, have they talked about it? Have they talked about this? The vision plan is non-existent because our elected leaders are asleep on the wheel for a long time, for 28 long years. There is no vision, there's no plan. It's just, uh, you know, they are there with the lobbyist and addressing the needs of the lobbyist and not for the people. And that's why we need fearless people-centric behavior to be in Congress. And that's the reason why we are running. Look at the phenomenal work our interns have done. They, are, they have provided seniors on the bottom left corner, you can see this, uh, the groceries, medication. We have, you know, some, somebody wanted coffee and we went out and, and provided them the coffee beans that they needed. You know, something very simple, but we are there to help because we want to make sure that our seniors are quarantined. You know, some of our students from interns, they are building out masks, 3D printers. You know, they are making all this, uh, the face shields for our healthcare professionals. You know, this is a sad state where America was not pandemic prepared. You know, we didn't have PPEs. We were struggling with that. And that's a huge problem. You know, this is, America did not perform in comparison to some of the third world countries. You know, we failed, we fell on our knees with this pandemic and we could have done a lot better. And I pointed to our elected leaders who were not quite engaged on this one. Shelter in place coding. I don't know how many of you attended that, but we had over 500 kids who signed up for that when we first announced it. So we are winding up the eighth week and as the finish of this class, of this particular session, you know, we are running the uh, hackathon and then we are doing a pitch fest next weekend. And we have some venture capital community judges who are going to be judging that. They'll be watching all the innovative ideas and who knows, perhaps they might decide to invest into your project. They might fund you, you know, who knows, somebody might get a million dollars to get that project going. I never know, these things happen in Silicon Valley for sure. And why not you, why not you? So this is the reason why we are also running the internship program to empower every youth of Silicon Valley. You know, this is the sixth year of our internship program. And if you're looking for something to do this summer, you know, don't wait, don't wait because things don't fall into your lap. Right now, it's actually very hard. You know, there are folks who are expert coders and they are struggling to find a job. They are struggling to find an internship over the summer because the economy is very hard hit. But if you join our team, you will get a chance to discover a whole new world. We are solving problems daily. Go to my website, rishikumar.com and search 21 minutes. You know, this is the only congressional site in all of the United States that has a search box very clearly defined. And it spits out your search output in a very, very nanosecond way. You know, this is what our elected leaders should be doing. Look at the policy ideas that we talk about. You know, we have written white papers on this topic compared to many of the congressional candidates who run will have short blurbs. Okay, I'll do this, I'll do that, with not much substance. Right? This is what we commit. You know, we are giving this all we can and it's going to be a really good story. Now look at the organization we have set up. This is a mid-sized company. The number of interns we have, hundreds of interns, we have directors, we have managers. We have students from some of the best schools like Johns Hopkins University. We have from University of California, Berkeley, from UCLA, you know, from some of the best schools of the United States. And then we also have obviously some of the best schools here in, uh, in uh, Silicon Valley, some of the high schools, you know, Valley Christian, you talk about Harker, you talk about uh, Basis, you talk about Saratoga High School, Las Caras High School, and uh, Monte Vista, Lindbrook. I mean, we have students from all over. And when you join this program, you will find, you will find a path of learning, empowerment, and discovery. It's going to be a phenomenal journey for you. So you look at the mechanics of a campaign. You know, these are the exact components of a campaign that somebody like, uh, like Joe Biden is running today or, or President Donald Trump is running today. The scale is different, but the mechanics is exactly the same in terms of what we are doing. You know, we have been running campaigns for a long time. Before I ran for office, I ran three different campaigns myself. I was a campaign manager. You know, we understand this from the inside and uh, this is the reason why this run is going to be phenomenal. It's very exciting. And with all of you here today, you know, I'm, I'm really, really happy that all of you are taking the time to participate in this hackathon. And uh, it's a learning opportunity. Some of you will be coding. Some of you will do policy. 
And once again, my hats off to to Priya Shastri for leading this effort for us. Uh, she's been with our team for almost two years now, and I really value her leadership and her insight in terms of how she approaches these types of opportunities, in terms of how she engages the youth like you. And she is definitely a huge force that we have going well for us. So with that, let's see if you have any questions for me, anything I can answer. Uh, thank you, Rishi, for that amazing keynote. Uh, I'm sure everybody is now pepped up to um, uh, keep looking at what they can do further um, and uh, continue with uh, the hackathon project. Um, uh, so um, we will go back uh, to our um, schedule um, that we had before. Um, uh, so given that uh, Rishi's keynote uh, um, is uh, is done, we'll uh, continue with uh, with splitting the groups into coding and policy. And here you have the slide here that uh, that talks about team formation and how we are going to make uh, two Zooms. So Dia, do you want to go ahead? Sure, so I'm going to send out the link to the second slide. So please make sure that you join it if you're doing policy. If you're encoding, please stay in this room. So um, has everyone filled out the form for the teams that I sent earlier? If you haven't, please do that now. All right, I wish you all the very best to enjoy a day of learning education, empowering yourself with this path of discovery via the hackathon. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me my email is campaign at uh, rishi2020.com. All the very best to you and may you all win. All right, enjoy the day. Bye. Thank you, Rishi. Thank you so much, Rishi. Um, can you send out the link to the form again? Uh, yes, I can send that out. Thank so you. if you're in policy, go ahead and switch over to the second Zoom room. And I will send out the form again. Is everyone there on Discord so you can get started quickly? So um, the form links would be uh, put up in the chat window. Uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, so um, for the policy teams, you would be moving to this other Zoom. So how many of the people here are from the policy team? Please move to the other room if you're from. Yeah. I think so the only switched the... over. To Discord. All right. Yeah. So everyone from the policy should have moved over already. So I think everyone here is uh, the coding groups. Okay. Okay. So Ethan, do you want to um, uh, do you want to run over uh, some of the coding uh, basics like um, like the GitHub and. Uh, um, downloading the repository and the data set and uh sure so um i'm assuming most of you know how to use github if you don't i'll be putting a link in the uh chat in a second here and so i'll give you guys access to the github repository so you guys have access to the data sets and um there are any questions, you know, you can ask me directly either in Zoom here or on the Discord, and I'll show the link for that in a second. And um, the main goal is just to create a piece of software that will solve some issue related to COVID.
Uh, if there's, I'm assuming there are no questions, but are there any questions? Is anybody here? Well, the links are not showing up when I'm pasting it from the email, okay. Is anybody here? Can we get someone after? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So uh, are you stuck or are you already getting help in Discord? I think we should probably just uh, start the breakout rooms and let people get started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people do we have on Discord, uh, Ethan? Can you send the link for the Discord out? Yeah. It's about 50 people. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so that's about all of them, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Discord link is here. Is everybody seeing it? Okay, I'm gonna keep... I, think, yeah. I think... Oh no, never mind. Yeah. I'm in. Okay. Oh, Priya, there's a question in the chat. They're asking if they're required to stay on this call or move to the Discord. Uh, move to the Discord, I think. I, I well, think if you guys could stay on here for like 10-15 uh, minutes while we assign people to teams. And then after we assign teams, you guys can head over to the Discord and just introduce yourself so that I know who's in what team and can assign the proper roles. Uh, Priya, could you uh, do the breakout room so people can join or people can get assigned to teams, please? Uh, breakout rooms in Zoom, you mean? Uh, yeah, so that people can get grouped together. Okay. Excuse me? Yes. Uh, um, how are we going to do breakout rooms? Because with breakout rooms, I think you have to assign people to them. So how are we going to uh, do that? You can, you can randomly what if we already have a team? Um, if you already have a team and all your team is in GitHub or on the Discord, could one person from your group just say, I'm on a team with like three or four other people on the Discord? So I clicked on breakout rooms. I'm not seeing uh, I'm not seeing any uh, activity there. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. Uh, should I say uh, assign 32 participants into eight rooms automatically? Uh, I think so. And then we'll just have to shuffle people around just to make sure everyone's okay. on the right team. Yeah, so the rooms are open now. And uh, everybody has been invited to join a breakout room. Go ahead and join one of the rooms and then... Uh, Is everybody able to uh, hear? Uh, Priya, could you make me a co-host? I can see who's on which team. Okay. I'm not sure I have that ability, but I'll try. Okay. Yeah. You're the co-host, Ethan. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll look at the uh, stuff on it. I think you assigned me to a breakout room, so I can't see other people in breakout rooms. Yeah, same. Um, hello. Yeah, hello. Um, hello. Yeah. So I'm supposed to, um, Priya said I should be in uh, Yeah, I moved you. I, I sent you an invite, uh, Akshay, to go into room four. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And Jacob, uh, where is Jacob? Be? Okay, I'm moving him to room four as well. Okay. Anybody else wants to move elsewhere? Please let me know right now. Who are your teammates? Nilesh, um, Nilanj. Nilanj, who are your teammates? Which room do you want to go to? Uh, I mean, tell me who are your teammates. I'll put you in that room.
Okay, so I see Ananya, Anurag, Arnav. I'm in a team with two other people, but for the breakout room, I was um, with people not from our team. So, uh, are you are you and your teammates on the Discord? Just one of our teammates is. Um, okay. Uh, give me a second. I can try and shuffle you guys around in a second here so that you guys are on the right teams. Can you just message or put in the chat who your teammates are? Uh, yeah, we had. Uh, okay, thanks. I'll uh, look at that and just shuffle you guys around. Okay. Anybody else uh, not assigned to any breakout room? Wait, uh, can so, can I get like co-hosting privileges so I can uh, move around to mentor if needed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. And can you remove me from my breakout room because I am not supposed to be part of a breakout room? Okay. Why are you in a breakout room? Okay. Yeah, that's the same with me too. Uh, who is who was that talking? Rishab. Okay. Yeah, can you tell me your uh, breakout room? Which room are you in? I'm not in a room right now, but I was assigned to four. And I was assigned to two. Oh, okay, okay. I'll make you co-host as well, uh, Rishabh. And uh, uh, you are a co-host, so um, uh, Ethan, yeah. Uh, yeah. I made you a co-host, um, Rishabh. And Ethan, what do you need to do? You had me in a breakout room, breakout room two. I just need you to remove me from that uh, breakout You're in room. one now. You're in one now. Um, but I can... Uh, how do I remove you from the breakout room? One second. Oh yeah, I can put you in unassigned. Okay. Let's move to 